Dragon Ball Z. Hunter Hunter. And now it's time to touch on One Piece. Let's get into it. So today we have two quite notable animators behind both scenes. Masahiro Shimanuki seems to handle the majority of the original one from episode 43, while now Toshishida takes on the remake of the scene in the TV special episode of East Blue. If you've watched my videos before, you'll no doubt be familiar with these two names, considering they were among some of the top action animators back on Dragon Ball in the 80s and 90s, so of course I've made mention of them a few times. And here they are, back again, so let's see what they have to offer. Now starting with the original, this one's kind of cool for the simple fact that you have the whole Seigasha squad, one of the best and my personal favourite studios to have worked back on the three original Dragon Ball series. Android 19 having his arms ripped off, the Kamehameha vs Gallic Gun, the driving episode, these guys were behind many classic moments. And it's also a little sad because this is the last time they ever all worked together as the mentor behind the team here, Tomokichi Takeuchi, would pass away in 2001. And at the time of this episode, he was around 80. Yes, this man loved his job. Now, let's start. Luffy says he wants to destroy it all, so he does by launching his foot through the roof. Arlong then fixes his nose. Even though I haven't watched One Piece, I really like the style of faces in this era. Perhaps it's because they are more narrow in shape than later when they have that sort of rounder look. Either way, I approve. There's also hatching, always been a fan of it, gives a bit of grit to the aesthetic which definitely works here and is a nice little visual cue to kind of say, hey this scene's important. Now I'm guessing this part is actually Kazuya Hisada, going off the spacing but also speed lines. Hisada likes few of them and usually spaces the line out fairly wide from each other. Then you have Shimanuki who just goes all in, he does not hold back. Anyways there is in the shark tooth drill. Arlong goes for Luffy and just as he bites into him, Arlong gets smacked down. Pretty cool scene. It seems Shimanuki starts around here. You've got those lines everywhere. Although he seemed to be using a lot of white ones at this time, perhaps to make them a little more subtle. Now Shimanuki has always been about big dramatic hits and detailed effects. So he's definitely the man for a scene like this. Good choice there by the director. The thing is he does all of this with fairly limited animation. And so what carries this scene is more so his drawings and how he applies animation fundamentals like timing and spacing along with the storyboard that makes this scene deliver. Now if you're like limited animation, timing, spacing, what's that meant to mean? I went over this fairly in depth and in regards to Shimanuki coincidentally in the Dragon Ball Z vs Naruto video but I'll go over it again. As an example when Luffy gets bitten, he uses only about 6 drawings. The spacing is in regards to the distance or space between each of them. You can see when we go slowly how they snap a fair bit. This is one way to illustrate the speed of an action, but it also comes in handy because you can use fewer drawings and thus save time. And you can see it again with the main strike, but even more extreme using only one drawing and more so effects like this flickering white smear, camera shake, and the dissolving camera pan as the main pull. And finally there's then the length of the hold which is about 3 seconds. The length definitely helps with giving drama as well. Again, it's limited in animation terms, but still holds power thanks to all the features mentioned. And you can see it all over his work in Dragon Ball Z, and even in his really early work. It's a great way to deliver an impactful hit, despite the limited time that comes with TV animation. And I also have to mention that the perspective as Luffy's foot breaks out is really good. This is of course taken from the manga, so I'm not going to give too much credit to the storyboard artist, although I will to Shimanuki for being able to draw quite a difficult perspective. Now after the hit there is blood everywhere, with this very DBS cut of Luffy, like you have the wave glass filter, the slow pan up, and also yelling. The director for this episode had never worked on Dragon Ball at this time, so this is definitely more so thanks to Shimanuki, who is of course a Dragon Ball animator, so makes sense why it feels that way. Anyway, Arlong gets knocked down through each floor and into a table. There's smoke coming out from every direction, everyone's shocked and then the camera zooms out and you see the whole aftermath. First up, I love this drawing of Arlong, probably my second favourite in the scene. Sort of like hatching, this is a nice way to emphasise this particular moment. It's distinctive through contrast and, well, I love bold line work. As you might expect, it isn't new to his work and definitely is frequent in his work on Z as well. 
Now, Shimanuki's always been one to include some flashy effects work that is achieved not exactly through scale, although that can be the case, but more so just the amount of detail he packs into them. For example, here you have about 13 separate blasts coming from the window and then a smoke trail coming from up here. Definitely time consuming to be animating all of those elements. Then you have the flagpole come down, it shatters and there's pieces of debris everywhere. Not too long later, it gets more detailed again as the castle slowly crumbles. It's really impressive how much is going on here. It's a great way to finish this scene and it's more so where the complexity in terms of animation lies within it. Now though to the 2017 scene by now Toshi Shida. So when it comes to Shida, nothing is static. It's like he wants to make everything as complex as possible using high frame rates, quite tight spacing, which requires a lot more drawings, then add the fact that they're often quite detailed with a lot of line used and shading. To sum it up, it is not easy by any means to pull off. And well, I guess you can see all that literally within the first two seconds. Like Hisada's roof kick was great. It was quite animated and it isn't a static shot either. The camera actually moves with the character. It's a feature of his work that I've always loved as it gives a bit of life to the animation. But Cheetah goes for this low angle rotation, then as Luffy is about to kick, the camera rotates and comes up underneath, then zooms into his eye, then out tracking the foot. It goes without saying it looks impressive and it should be of no surprise that it is equally difficult. You're having to draw the human body, which is for one quite complex, but within these very difficult angles. And even though having an awareness of perspective is very much a fundamental that any good animator should have, Shida's work displays a mastery of it. Now the second noteworthy point is how the animation is paced out, with these quick bursts of movements then holds. It's a feature to his work that's become more and more pronounced over time and is quite a distinctive trait. And surprise surprise, it's all throughout his work here such as when Luffy draws back his leg in anticipation, but definitely when he hits the roof, everything slows down to emphasize the action. Then once it comes up again, the timing goes to twos, then threes, with the spacing increasingly getting tighter to give that slow-mo effect. Now, on a side note, there is a slight change in the storyboard, but it's not all too different. With this shot coming much earlier, still works nicely, so no problems there. Getting back to Arlong, the nose crack is missing, so a little sad, but this character acting, you know, it's not the standard still drawing with lip flaps. This extra amount of animation definitely expresses his anger better, especially in how he swings his head around and to the side, back and forth, before making his sudden leap right at the camera. It's a lot more energetic than the original in that respect. Once again though, I have to talk about the camera work. Instead of cutting between different shots like Luffy's shock reaction, then Arlong, then back again, by having it all in one continuous cut definitely gives a great sense of flow. You also have other classic Sheeta traits like the big lip flaps and shaking the head around. Besides that, I also appreciate the clarity to when Arlong bites into Luffy. Now, while I love that style of very snappy Carter style actions like in the original, it was a little quick and I didn't even realize what happened exactly. It wasn't until watching this version, I was like, ah, oh, he got a big chomp and then it all made sense. Now the most important thing of all though is what about the smackdown? Safe to say, it's good. And in terms of execution, it's actually pretty similar. Long hold, camera shake, and although it's not actually a still frame, which I was thinking it was at first, but rather again just really tightly spaced drawings, still it doesn't appear all that different since there's barely any animated movement. Now honestly, I like how Shimanuki held on the hit for longer, but Shida's drawings definitely are a bump up. For one, Luffy's pose, Sheeta pushes it a lot more, bringing his body down and his arms further out. There's a lot more force to it, and I would even say depth. Then with Arlong, it's likewise very expressive. You can see there's a lot more manipulation with shape, with the left eye and eyebrow being stretched out while the right is being pushed down. And he does this through these very strong curves, in contrast to Shimanuki, which relies more on straights. Shida really wants to push the facial muscles out more, which gives more expression naturally, but it also makes it look more three-dimensional. And I think that's even more clear in the next cut. He's again defined many of the muscle groups of the face with not just line, but also shading. There's much more roundness to the eyes. The eye, of course, is a spherical object, and it definitely feels more like it's treated as such here. There's also other basic principles like overlap, which help in giving a bit more depth. This also is a good example of separating your stylistic taste from something that is better drawn. Because personally, I actually much prefer the style of Luffy in this shot by Shimanuki and all the hatching and whatnot, but as a drawing itself, Sheeta's is a level up. Still, both are great, but I really like what Sheeta has done here. 
Now, rather than giving us a view outside of the castle, much in line with the manga, here you get to see Arlong smash through each of these floors. Not a bad addition. The timing is on one, so everything goes by very quickly and mixed together with some detailed effects. The animation has this explosive energy to it, which leads perfectly into the big final hit. The rest of the scene though seems to veer a little bit from the manga and the original again with the storyboard, and also the actual sequence of events with the building collapsing right after the hit, and then like this cool low shot added. It might be a little less faithful to the manga, but generally I think these are quite nice additions. Now for the verdict. I honestly think that both these scenes were great, the character art in the original was good, even though Kazuya Hisada, the animation supervisor's corrections are everywhere, some of Shimanuki's drawings make it in which look nice as well. The storyboard by Junji Shimizu is pretty accurate to the manga so there's nothing really to note there. The animation, while certainly conservative in areas, still delivers in giving impact. With the remaster, this section is supervised by Midori Matsuda, Coincidentally, who would take over from Hisada the position of character designer for the TV series only a couple of years later. Thankfully, he seems to leave Shida's work completely uncorrected, although that isn't all too surprising in this era of Shida's work, since he's typically given freedom on whatever project he's been brought onto. But like on many of those projects, he definitely stands out. For one, I simply appreciate how much more animated the scene is, and generally, it's just filled with energy and dynamism. Although in terms of effects work as the castle collapses, I think Shimanuki's work still sits on top. Really great work of course though by the unknown animator as well. Now the storyboard by Takashi Otsuka also has some nice additions as I mentioned. I guess the effect he wanted simply was coolness with quick explosions, low angles, and cutting some parts out of the manga to make it go just a little bit faster. For the most part, I'm okay with that, but I think keeping in line with the slower pacing to the crumbling of the castle that the original did gives a bit more significance to its destruction. And also a little tidbit for Dragon Ball fans, the character designer and who also supervised part of this special was actually a former studio cockpit member, Masayuki Sato. But yeah, I think the remaster is better in many areas but there's definitely a lot to love about the original. But hey, let me know what you thought, which one out of these two was your favorite. Also, shout out to my patrons, big ups, and you can also go on there if you want to support the channel. And of course, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later.